Um, yes, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, ROS2 on VxWorks and uh, talk uh, uh, what our company is doing around this and why we are doing this. Um, I want to um, uh, probably say a few words. I, I have attended the, this conference like two years ago, and, and they come now after two years, and this is a big change, actually. So I can see that a lot of people using ROS and, and it's so many cool stuff around this. It's really exciting about this. So um, I'm not sure whether you know what, what WinDriva is doing or what VxWorks is. So uh, we are an embedded software company. So we are doing uh, software for embedded devices for, for the like, small devices without normally without m uh, monitor or GUI. And we are present in all, actually in all industries. Our software is, uh, uh, we have a real-time operating system and we have also embedded Linux. Our software is uh, real-time and safe. And uh, probably uh, um, I, I will talk a little bit about what VxWorks is. VxWorks is a proprietary uh, real-time operating system. It's a POSIX compliant and uh, it has a kernel and uh, user space separation. Um, it has uh, C and C++ libraries. It's possible to develop, for instance, kernel C++ modules. It is safety certified, uh, um, so it is uh, certified based on the uh, defense and avionic standards, based on automotive and uh, industrial standards. Um, it has uh, um, it, it uses a LVM8 uh, compiler and uh, proprietary C and C++ library, and uh, it, uh, it has uh, Eclipse-based development environment, and uh, um, you can develop using whether Windows or Linux. Um, this is the industry examples of uh, um, so customers. Uh, basically, our software is inside all industrial robots, which which you have. It's in, inside KUKA, EBB, Yaskawar. Uh, probably the the best example for the uh, VxWorks is is a NASA. So all uh, rovers on the Mars run in VxWorks. Um, if I would map uh, um, our products to the uh, to ROS, I, I, I could imagine some kind of this picture. You uh, starting with the with edge compute, so we, we do provide uh, uh, titanium. This is the infrastructure for the uh, edge compute, which is high available. And, and you can put, for instance, uh, yeah, my, I'm planning to, to try it out with ROS and put ROS2 framework on it. Uh, then. Um, uh, we do provide the TSN support, and then you can build very interesting configuration where you can put uh, um, TSN switch even with uh, ROS applications on top, and then uh, you can use, uh, um, here you can use uh, different nodes running uh, safe real-time or non-real-time non operating systems on the hypervisor, so you can, you can build actually uh, mixed critical applications uh, using um, our products. And uh, uh, probably not many people know Zypher, uh, what is Zypher? Zypher is free RTOS, and, and actually we have developed Zypher, and now it's open source. So we can, it's possible also to, to use um, uh, this operating system for the microcontrollers and build actually the whole stack uh, to the cloud. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about embedded development landscape and what, what are the problems. Uh, so it's, it's highly heterogeneous hardware. You have MCU, CPUs, GPUs. It's like embedded H4 cloud. It's different sensors, uh, LiDAR camera. Uh, it's, it's various properties of the operating systems, hard, soft, uh, real-time, best effort, uh, C++. Um, uh, programming language. Um, I think many people have discussed this, that it's not, not enough software engineers with, uh, with at all, and, and it gets decreased even the engineers who have experience in embedded. 
uh, why, why should people know about bit bytes interrupts? I mean, they, they just program the applications. And uh, I would say many people not can, do not want to program embedded. I mean, and I think we, if we are talking about um, industrial, I think we, we need, we, we scare people a little bit uh, with all this stuff like, uh, you start discussing with people and, 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 and start saying, hey, have you, have you thought about security? Have you thought about real time? Have you thought about safety? And people get scared because they want to develop their just great applications. They have their great ideas and they want to develop that. And uh, um, I mean, I put this uh, diagram. This is from uh, Ross Org. You can see how, uh, how fast the uh, uh, number of robots uh, grows, right, across um, along with the time. Population does not grow in this proportion, right? So you cannot have the same, you know, increase of the software engineers which, which provides, uh, which can support all this growth, right? Uh, if you look at, for instance, if you look at Ross 2 architectures, uh, you can see that uh, actually it, it ends up in, in, on C, C++ level, right? I think it's needed some kind of more uh, domain-specific APIs where people do not program like, again, start program against C, C++, but program on some kind of uh, uh, higher level. Then um, if you look at the, because you don't have enough engineers, uh, this technical depth, uh, depth grows uh, over the time. So uh, this is an example of uh, kernel version. Uh, so kernel version versus uh, how many fix me and to do uh, present in the kernel. Uh, and, and you see it, it constantly grows just because you don't have engineers to, to fix it, all of this stuff. And, and the same, I think, true for us too, so it's, it's try to, to keep with, so there is a list of technical depth. Um, I think uh, this, this great example was brought uh, first um, uh, in, in previous presentations, right? I, I just want to, to show you, I mean, do you see, this is the amount of uh, tools which can be used to optimize your system, right? So you need really deep knowledge of all this stuff to be able to to uh, capture all this stuff and then, then understand what that means, right? So it's, it, I think it's a basically huge usability problem of, of, uh, of all this stuff. It's, it's not related to ROS, but, but also very much related to embedded development. So you have uh, like um, many, many little kids playing with smartphone is fine, but like, can you really let kids playing with a robot, probably not, because it's not safe, it's not like, you don't know what, what, what it will be doing, actually. And uh, um, I give a little bit more examples. This is a, I talk to many people here. Uh, this is how development journey starts. So you basically have a uh, Great idea and start developing on Ubuntu or you start developing on Windows. Uh, but then uh, you, you develop your stuff and then you try to put it on, on the target. And it, it is probably not more, uh, not anymore Intel. You, you start to use another hardware. Uh, and, and this is where a huge gap exists. So you need to cross compilation tools, different environment. And, and all this stuff. So then you go next step, for instance, and, and you need, you need for, uh, for example, real-time operating system. It's just yet another different environment. And then you, you move to, to safety operating system, and, and this is just another environment with, with some other tools and other methods. You, you can even put a hypervisor underneath, and it gets really really then difficult. Um, so, uh, I have multiple customers which uh, encounter this situation and they come 
and say, hey, where is this magic button I want to press, and then suddenly everything works on my system. It's optimized, and, and, and unfortunately, there is, no, uh, there is no such a magic button, but uh, I think um, this is what, what not, not only ROS or industrial community think about, this is what also our company think about, uh, thinks about, so how to make these uh, steps easier for, for ROS developers, right? And uh, probably um, we have mentioned today that there is a, this uh, technical steering committee and there are various groups and probably we need to talk about usability and, and discuss this, how to, to make uh, all these uh, deployment scenarios or deployment from uh, from desktop to the real system much easier, probably to create a ready-to-use package where you can deploy like, or like complete image which, which you can build and deploy in a couple of minutes. Um, so what we are doing at, at WindRiver, um, so we have now um, uh, labwindriver.com, WindRiver Labs, uh, this we uh, we plan uh, to have a platform for the innovation. Um, I think for the, this is for the first time for WindRiver, where WindRiver has uh, provided uh, downloadable SDK, so people can go and download uh, VxWorks for the non-commercial usage. And, and uh, there are multiple boards which are supported, is, is uh, uh, ARM boards and uh, Intel boards and, and QMU, so you can, um, you can try it how it works and, and uh, build your applications on top of this. Uh, so, besides that, um, I have ported ROS2 uh, on, on this SDK, so it's possible to, uh, to grab uh, what, what we have done here and, uh, and the build uh, uh, ROS2 stack on top of it. Um, I will talk a little bit um, what is inside, right? So, as, uh, as you understand, so it is split in, uh, let's say, what they have ported is, is non-graphical uh, part of the ROS uh, to distribution because uh, it's a real-time operating system for all visualization tools or simulation tools. You can still use uh, another computer, Ubuntu, but you, or whatever based Linux distribution, but you can then um, uh, run those tools and you, you can run uh, ROS2 stack on VxWorks and, and uh, can visualize with, uh, um, with the tools which are located on your host computer. So there are two, uh, two repositories. One repository is just for the uh, simplicity uh, just to build um, a ROS stack. So uh, you just download SDK, it's very simple steps. You download SDK, you set up development environment uh, for this SDK and you do make, and uh, after that, uh, based on the SDK, uh, the image will be produced, which um, allows you to, to deploy, uh, deploy it on Raspberry Pi, AppSquare, and, and QMU, as I said. And uh, there is another layer with, uh, with the patches. So there are a couple of patches which uh, needs to be applied because, I mean, um, VX works, even it is POSIX, but POSIX is a different POSIX. It's not the same POSIX as, I mean, as, as for Linux. So I need to, to apply different patches. Um, but uh, the build itself looks similar. So if you look, this is a normal build, how you build the ROS2 natively, and, and actually you need to just provide a um, CMake toolchain file, which is VxWorks specific to, to this build, and, and then you build the same way, basically. Um, we, um, we are working uh, to enable all of this stuff on, on uh, TurtleBot that people can, uh, can use it and try it. And, uh, this we will do pretty soon. I mean, probably it's, it will be after, uh, so in the beginning of the next year. Um, yeah, so to, um, to summarize, um, 
this this kind of I mean products we I I, I want to highlight probably also WinDriva Linux even if I am talking about uh, real time and VxWorks, but we have also our embedded Linux distribution, and uh, we also plan to provide support uh, for us to for this uh, for for embedded WinDriva Linux uh, as well, and then. So the idea is that you, you might have a SDK which allows you smoothly move from Ubuntu to um, WinDriva Linux or through to VxWorks and back. Um, so this SDK is um, what we have, we provide is pre-integrated with Eclipse and Visual Code and uh, um, I participate in, in various uh, working groups of ROS2 community, so basically it's real-time and safety. I plan uh, probably also to join Embedded, and uh, uh, this is yeah, where our, I think our, our competence play at best. Um, you can find projects on, on the GitHub, so this is uh, freely available, and actually the, the plan is that uh, in 2019, uh, there are three operating systems which are supported by, uh, uh, by, ROS2, uh, by ROS Foundation, and uh, I plan to work that in, in, in the next year people can just, um, uh, yeah, just use out of the box this experience, uh, so to use in real time uh, VxWorks and WinGiva Linux. And uh, this is my last slide, so I, I think, um, if you have any interest to try how you can apply VxWorks, I'm here, and uh, there is a uh, labs .com site, so you can go and ask questions. Uh, so I'm, I'm ready to support you. Thank you very much.